Hello, it is Tuesday, May 31st, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle, so as yesterday, we are likely going to solve a um, fairly approachable puzzle today. And it is not only likely, but certain that this uh, particular edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Bradley Pirtle, Trash Snack, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon cam- campaign, for directly supporting this channel with their contributions. So thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who has backed the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. If you do so, in return, you will receive all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So I hope you enjoy those. And thank you so much to everybody who has contributed to that campaign. Uh, it does mean a lot to me. So thank you. And thank you if you've subscribed to the channel. Uh, I suppose I also don't, I haven't recently mentioned liking the videos. So thank you if you've liked the videos. That's apparently something that's very helpful in terms of recommending uh, these the series to others on YouTube. So if you've done that, thanks as well. These are um, small things, I guess, that I still appreciate. So thank you for, for everybody who's done all of those things. And if you'd like to join the Daily Solve Discord chat community, you can find that in a link in the description field underneath the video as well. There you can, of course, chat with others about the daily crossword, these videos, the daily wordle, and you can solve puzzles created by members of that community. So uh, that is a nice place to go. Okay, now let's solve today's puzzle. How about that? This is, of course, a Tuesday-themed puzzle constructed by Sam Buchbinder and Brad Wilbur. Uh, Sam Buchbinder um, has constructed a handful of puzzles and Brad Wilbur several dozen, so quite an experienced New York Times crossword constructor. And this puzzle was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get started. Why not? All right, plenty. I feel as though that could be, I mean, it could be ample, probably could be other things as well. Um, Actor Hemsworth. Liam Hemsworth, I think there's another Hemsworth as well. Uh, I can't think of their name. Um, Let's try this. Clumsy, and then what is this? Prompted. I don't know. I think there might even be more than two Hemsworths. Hemsworths? (laughs) I'm not sure, so maybe I'll leave that blank for now. Keep bumping into another punk music fan. Oh, that's funny. Mosh. So as in a mosh pit, a um, uh, kind of almost (laughs) contact dancing, I guess. You're sort of, you know, aggressively moving around in a punk show. Country in the Mediterranean. It could be Malta. Not supporting could be anti as opposed to pro, a particular um, proposition or argument. Challenge for a plumber, maybe a leak would be something you'd hire a plumber to tackle. Many a consumer of trail mix would be a hiker, someone who hikes. To outdo somebody would be to one-up them. Word before of mind or emergency, a state of mind or a state of emergency. Um, If you're discerning, you're astute, you're aware, you're observant. And a member of a virtual family, I think this would be a sim, a character from the computer game The Sims, which is a sort of Life simulator, help, hence the name. Okay, alternative to Huggies or Loves. Ah, and then this is referred to in our revealer, which looks like today it's running through the center of the grid. So this clue is alternative to Huggies or Loves. Those are diaper brands, clearly, especially with that diaper being uh, in the clue. A cloth diaper, maybe? So Huggies and Loves would be disposable diapers, and perhaps the alternative would be a cloth diaper. But let's actually read this revealer and see what it says. Suggestion to defer discussion and what might be said of 1725, 46, and 60 across. Um, I'm not sure. Suggestion to defer discussion. Let's table this, which has sort of a different meaning in the U.S. than it does um, in the UK, uh, which sometimes leads to, um, confusion and sort of, uh, (laughs) transatlantic work meetings, that kind of thing. Um, here in the UK, you'd use, let's table this to mean introduce a topic of discussion, whereas in the UK, you would use let's table this to indicate delaying it. Um, 
And I wonder if tabling has anything to do with this because, I don't know, you might change a diaper on a table or something. What about this one? Figure in many hexes. Figure in many hexes. Um, it could mean hexagon, but more likely it will mean a curse or a spell of some kind. And what about this clumsy? I don't know. I seem to be losing my losing my grip here. One of two akimbo. You could have your arms akimbo, your arms extended. Angel's instrument, often sort of stereotypically, an angel might play a harp. And supporting, oh, supporting could be pro, which would be the opposite of anti. What was that clue? Not, yes, right. So we have not supporting and supporting as anti and pro, respectively. A hairy hand could be an animal's paw. And a cavernous opening could be a maw, which rhymes with paw. Powder-based beverage, powder-based beverage, right. The thing that astronauts drink, tang. It's a powder-based fruit drink. Okay, here we have a two-part clue. Um, C44 down and 44 down is with 44 across holder for a Thanksgiving dessert. A pie pan, perhaps? And a group targeted for destruction and Independence Day, the human, human race, I suppose. Quite an inclusive group, that one. Stampede. And then what was the... Oh, right, here, this. Oh, right, right, right. Um... Out? This UT makes this look like put or out. Edge. The cusp of something, if it were put. Let's try that. Oh, actually, this does look like cloth diaper then, doesn't it? And prefix with puncture would be acupuncture, an ornery sort. Ornery, ornery what? A sort of disagreeable or intemperate what? Stampede, a rush, a, uh, I was going to say a mad rush, but that doesn't fit. So let's, oh, let's put a pin in it. Not let's table it. Let's put a pin in it at a as you would a cloth diaper. Indeed. Okay. I wish I could have jumped straight to that, but I didn't. Um, let's put a pin in it is what you do to a cloth diaper and a what? A figure in many hexes. Um, I don't know. We'll get there eventually. Symbol of, symbol of wisdom, an owl, ironically, given I think owls aren't aren't really thought to be particularly intelligent. Scale amounts are weights, I suppose. And uh, prompted is what you prompted something you set to or blanket at the movies. I lost it at the movies as a collection of um, Pauline Kael film reviews. Um, actor Hemsworth, or maybe just Liam Hemsworth after all. Oh, if you're clumsy, you're maladroit, of, maladroit, of course. So, uh, uh, adroit meaning, or adroit, I guess, in, in English meaning um, deft, and then mal, French for bad. Uh, I guess adroit coming from to write, I guess, in French. Um, baby name that had popularity bumps after the releases of Frozen and Frozen 2. Must be Elsa, the character from Frozen. That makes perfect sense in which I'm sorry shows a closed fist in brief. Oh, American Sign Language. That's interesting. And prompted, um, led to, I see. If something prompted something, it led to something else, such as, let's put a pin in it. No, I guess it was cloth diaper that more prompted it than the other way around. Anyway, a uh, figure in many hexes. Oh, a voodoo doll, right? Oh, I wish I would have just come up with that out of the blue. Let's put a pin in it. That's funny. Heavy chorus instrument in Il Trovatore. Um, instrument is in quotation marks, which makes it seem like this is some kind of joke. Um, a gavel, perhaps? Napkin holder. A lap. You <laughs> might put a, lap, a, a, a napkin in your lap. A, a, a gavel being the sort of judge's hammer and it's banged plenty gads or globs group with the 1975 hit evil woman that's elo the electric light orchestra um 
I don't know why I'm mentioning this, but <laughs> the electric part does not refer to light being electric. The light orchestra refers to a sort of a light orchestra, a small orchestra, which is a sort of style of orchestra that would have been um, common in, uh, would have been sort of well known in the UK at that time. And so the electric refers to the electrification of a light orchestra, not um, electric light, which is what I think I assumed as a child. Request to someone dressing your submarine sandwich. Oh, maybe this isn't gavel. An anvil. There we go. Another <laughs> rhythmically hammered thing. Look at that. That's funny. Uh, no oil. Oops. No, why can't I type this? Okay. And plenty. Um, oh, it is ample, I think, after all. Tupperware tops are lids. Uh, dollar signs represent moolah money. And gathering where one might make a splash could be a pool party. Stampede. It does look like Rush, doesn't it? Ornery sort. Oh, a cuss. Yeah, okay. So that's a word, I guess, in a sort of, I don't know, Western American slang, I suppose. Sort of, I think of that as kind of an Old West derived word. An ornery cuss, a really disagreeable person or animal. Okay. Brand with the flavor cookie cobblestone. Edie's, maybe? Edie's ice cream? And nickname for Benedict or Edgar? Uh, Ned. Funny derivation of Ned from Edward or Edgar, which obviously don't have uh, ends in them. It's because my in English used to be mine. And so people would say things like mine Ed, uh, which was a more obvious nickname for Edward, say, or Edgar, I suppose. And uh, over time, that got, uh, so mine changed, changed to my, I mean, in, in language, often so, sounds just drop from the language because uh, it just hap that happens over time in, in all, in pretty much all languages. And then the mine ed got, uh, as the, as the end dropped off of mine, it got added onto the ed because people would use this in um, familiar contexts. And uh, that's where we get Ned and Nelly and other nicknames like that. A number, uh, quite a few sort of unintuitive nicknames come from that kind of linguistic, I don't know, elision, I guess. Um, I learned that on Lexicon Valley, which is a great linguistics podcast. Uh, Stampede is an onrush and cry at a World Cup match is Olay. And um, classical queen who cursed a Trojan fleet. Oh, this is infuriating that I can't bring this to mind. That's so frustrating. What about this? Its tributaries are blue and white. Oh, the Nile River. Uh, blue River and White River tributaries of the Nile. And without leaving crumbs behind. Tidy. Oh, tidily, right. Without leaving crumbs behind. It's an adverb. Right, I see. This person... Um, cleaned their place without leave, leaving crumbs behind. This person cleaned their place tidily. It's an adverb. There we go. Rec room is a sty. You could say this room looks like a total wreck. It's a pigsty. It's a sty. Zippo is nil, nothing, zero. One in a deep fried side dish. Onion bhaji? No, that doesn't fit. Onion ring, maybe? Place for a royal flush, a loo, I suppose. I guess the, so what's royal doing there? I suppose royal is simply, I, I guess it's it's sort of an oblique indication that this is referring to something in, in British English because Britain is a monarchy. So I guess that's what, I guess that's what that means. So loo being a British English term for a toilet. And then, uh, oh, Dido, and then, is the classical queen of Cursed Trojan Fleet, of course, and then puts on, oh, dons, I see. Yes. You put on clothing, you don that clothing. Did I look at that one before? I can't remember. Okay. Oh, here we have another theme answer. Place for splits and spares. A bowling lane, of course. Uh, you might put a pin in that or several pins. I guess, what, 10, ten pins uh, per lane? Organization for King James and Dr. Dre. Oh, sorry. I said Dr. Dre. Dr. J. Sort of read the doctor twice and read it the second time as Dre. Uh, no. Um, 
uh, these are basketball players, the NBA, the National Basketball Association. And Barry with 12 Silver Slugger Awards. Oh, look at that, another sports clue. That's a potentially dangerous cross for me. Fortunately, I knew them this time. Barry Bonds. That would be tough if you didn't have that cultural knowledge, um, which probably a lot of Americans would, but uh, maybe less likely in the case of others. I don't know. Really bothered could be eight at. That really bothered you at eight at you. Teen spirit could be angst. Um, there's a question mark there. And I suppose that's, I suppose that's because this is being a little bit cute, a little bit punny, teen spirit, angst. Less perfect, less than perfect, I think is probably the answer. And a national zoo attraction is a panda, presumably. IRS expert would be a CPA, a certified public accountant, or a chartered public accountant. And a money dispenser. Oh, that's funny. We have two clues in this puzzle that, that include three dollar signs. Uh, so anyway, an ATM machine, a slightly redundant phrase. Automated teller machine machine. That's fine. Uh, that is often said. And we'll put a pin in it. You'll put your pin in it. Actually, <laughs> speaking of... Uh, that exact kind of repetition, we'll put a pin number in it, a personal identification number number in the automated teller machine machine. Organization that might give a grant to a sculpture, the National Endowment for the Arts, perhaps. And zeniths could be acmes, sort of highest point. Competition favoring flexible contestants. Um, lim limbo, I think of the right thing. Do the limbo, you go under the why, why am I blanking out on that? I think that I think that's what that is. With 64 across, symbol of coldness. A ice, an ice cube. Oh, I see we have ice there. Oh, I, I guess I didn't look at this clue. No. Um, to yank something is to tug it, and barriers to compromise might be egos. There we go. Principal, Iraqi port, Basra. And more sore could be achier. And a spot for a guard at the World Cup. Um... Spot for a guard at the World Cup. Um, I'm not sure offhand. What about this? Shade of some turning leaves. Ochre? Maybe this isn't Basra. And card game in Austin novels. Oh, Whist. I think referred to in Jane Austen. It would have been a popular card game, I guess, in the 19th century UK. Um... Like some unbrushed suits, uh, linen. Why would they be unbrushed? Oh, linty, right, okay. I was thinking with linen, it's often sort of wrinkly just because of the material. And I was thinking, is that unpressed somehow? Is there some, but no, no, unbrushed as in not lint brushed. Okay, pot, spot for a guard at the World Cup is, oh, a chin guard. And what? Many do on the Sabbath is oh is ochre is this being spelled this way maybe pseudo sophisticated already oh it is Basra oh shin a shin guard yes that makes much more sense than chin guard sorry shin guard of course and it is Basra there we go okay great so we've solved the Tuesday puzzle I think that was a pretty approachable puzzle um. Maybe one, a few, a few tricky crosses, but um, we had a funny, a funny uh, ATM machine, a um, little bit of redundance, redundancy there, uh, and I like that. That I like that that is tied to. Let's put a pin in it, given that pin, uh, pin and ATM are are possibly the two most commonly, are are the two initialisms most commonly turned into that kind of recursive phrase, I would think, in daily language. So it's 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 nice to get them pointing to each other. All right, so what we what are we going to put a pin in today? Let's put a pin in a voodoo doll, a cloth diaper, a bowling lane, and an ATM machine. Um, I'm sure there will be people who are <laughs> who are infuriated rather than delighted in, <laughs> by the inclusion of ATM machine. We'll have to we'll have to see in the comments. I think um, a fairly approachable puzzle. Otherwise, on a Tuesday, let me know if you if you agree. Um, this NBA bonds thing, you never know. That could be a tough cross for some people. Uh, and there we have it. That was today's puzzle by Sam Bookbinder and Brad Wilbur. So uh, 
I think it was a good solid Tuesday puzzle. And again, I, as with yesterday, I enjoyed that. Well, this one would have been meaningless, I think, without let's put a pin in it. You maybe if if we had just seen voodoo doll cloth diaper bowling lane and ATM machine, I, I, I maybe would have said, oh, I see those things all involve pins. I think if I saw all four of them, I would probably come to that conclusion. Um, but we really needed the revealer. And as with yesterday, it was in the middle of the grid, which is an, an unusual position for the revealer, but but not dramatically unusual. I suppose it's the it's uh, more common than if the revealer were in the down clues anyway. And the revealer, I guess I didn't really explain it. It's the clue that explains what's going on with the theme. It sort of ties the whole theme together. And usually, as stipulated by uh, Lyle's Law, formulated by Daily Solve viewer Lyle, uh, it is most commonly found, actually, where ATM machine is here, that's the most common position for the revealer in the uh, towards towards the southeast of the grid in the across clues. But anyway, sometimes it's in the center and sometimes even it's somewhere else, but not often. So all of that said, let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. How about that? I don't think there were too many uh, corrections. No, just two. Uh, Victoria Rizhishka, well, I suppose this isn't so much a correction as an explanation. So thank you, Victoria, who explains, nougat is made from sugar or honey and whipped egg whites, and the combination of these ingredients gives it its chewy texture. Traditionally, it includes nuts and sometimes candy to dried fruit. I've never seen it in the wild without any nuts at all, unless it's a layer of a candy bar. Uh, so thank you, Victoria. And I think, to be honest, <laughs> it being a layer of a candy bar is in fact my primary familiarity with nougat. Um, but I see that I see, I, when you're saying if you would refer to a nougat bar as was in the puzzle yesterday, if it were if that were the sort of principal ingredient as opposed to it just being one ingredient of a you know named candy bar with its own set of things, then you would you would expect it to have nuts and possibly dried fruit. So uh, I am not familiar with nougat bars in that context. So thank you for that. Life is boss says, I believe you skipped 15 across. I would absolutely believe your belief because that seems to be a common thing with me lately. That was P from a pea shooter was the clue. And that resolved to the answer ammo, ammunition, a P from a pea shooter. So thank you, life is boss. And I think that's all I had. So thank you to uh, everybody who leaves comments as usual. Thank you to you for getting to the end of this puzzle. Thank you if you've liked this video and if you subscribe to the channel. And of course, thank you to everybody who's backed the Patreon campaign. So with that, I will take my leave. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I suppose tomorrow's a new month as well. I only just noticed that. Um, so that will mean new uh, videos. We'll have uh, a new monthly bonus puzzle from the New York Times. Other new things, we'll, we'll get there. All right. Uh, until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.